Hi, this is Javanka from JavankaCRS.com and today I have a very special guest. Her name is Nadia Andriva. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Javanka. Good, Good to be here. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. And the reason why I wanted to talk to Nadia, Nadia is a fellow health coach and a dear friend and a woman with just an amazing spirit. And she also has an amazing wealth of knowledge on all things Ayurveda. And Hello. she has been instrumental in helping me, um, in sparking that interest in, in Ayurveda. Uh, her Facebook page is really amazing and she has a very popular video, uh, blog, weekly blog called Spinach and Yoga, and uh, we're going to let her talk about that in a few minutes, but the reason why we brought her here is because we want to learn a little bit about Ayurveda and how we can incorporate that into our diet and lifestyle. Before I start asking Nadia questions, I want to tell you a little bit more about her that you may not know. Nadia, as I said, she's a health coach, but she's also a yoga instructor, and she is, and I'm quoting, she is a modern Ayurveda girl bringing a really fun and unique approach to health and wellness in general while incorporating the wisdom of the ancient practice of Ayurveda. I thank you. I said it better. That's beautiful. So welcome again and thank you for being here, Natia. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Cool. So let's get to it. Like, Tell us a little bit of what is Ayurveda? Well, Ayurveda is an ancient science of life. Um, it consists of two words. Um, Ayur, which means life, and Veda, which means science. So Ayurveda is not only a health science, but it's more about um, lifestyle and incorporating everything throughout a person's life and throughout a person's day to align all those actions and thoughts um, to help the person be at that very highest, best self of health and well-being that the person wants to be. So basically, you're staying healthy and happy and balanced the whole life. Cool, wonderful. And I've heard also that uh, something called doshas, which seems to be like body types and stuff. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about. Yeah, that. so you, it seems like you have a pretty uh, correct understanding of what a dosha is. Dosha is um, a mind body type, and in Ayurveda, there are three main doshas: vata, pitta, and kapha. And each one of us is, bo is born with one or two doshas predominating. And that, in a way, um, determines person's likes, dislikes, um, the way we look to a certain extent, the, what, what we prefer to eat, and also the weaknesses in our health and our body. Um, so, for example, if somebody is a vata type, um, born as a vata type, they will have that predominancy to have a little bit more dryness in their body. Um, and for example, a kapha type, they will be more likely to have more heaviness in their body. And pita types, they're just very fiery and they'll be more likely to have heartburn if they're imbalanced. Um, so basically, it helps us to understand our body better and gives us tools how we can keep our body in balance. And you can do a test online to find out uh, your body type, or you can go to an Ayurvedic consultant and they'll actually take your pulse and be able to give you your body type by the pulse. Oh, so it's really, really? That's pretty cool. And it's really uh, fascinating that you just said it. it's not just a body type, it's also a kind of like a spiritual or a mind type as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so usually they'll even separate. So the person can be... In their body, they can be vata type, but their mind can be more pitta. So their mind is more goal-oriented, very fiery, and they will just go to their goal until it's accomplished, um, and they're very social. Uh, but in the body, they can be very vata. Um, so one does not contradict another, and throughout the life, depending on the climate, depending on what the person has going on in their life, oh. one of the three doshas can start predominating. So, for example, if you eat a lot of sweets and heavy stuff and lots of dairy, um, eventually the kapha dosha will get in balance. So there will be more and more heaviness in the body. Um, and if somebody eats chilies nonstop and <laughs> lots of chocolate, right. pita right. is going to be more likely to get in balance and the person will have either heartburn or ulcer or uh, psoriasis or some sort of a skin inflammation or just general inflammation in the body. Oh, 
Okay, that's fascinating. So the, what I'm hearing is that everybody has all three types in their bodies. Just one of them happens to be more predominant. And depending on your lifestyle, things will get out of balance or something will start creeping up that shouldn't be creeping up. Um, and that leads me to my next question. Because sometimes when you hear about these Eastern uh, medicinal uh, therapies or treatments or, or, or ideas, uh, we think about preventative stuff that they're trying to prevent disease. But with Ayurveda, it sounds to me like you can treat conditions uh, even before they become diseases, or they can even you can even help complement whatever a particular allopathic treatment that you may be going through with Ayurvedic treatments. Yeah, I mean, there, um, there are definitely cases where allopathic medicine is necessary. So if you need a surgery, you better go get a surgery. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but in most cases, disease, especially if it's a chronic disease um, and something that the person was be has been living for the whole life with, um, it's a sign of a certain disbalance in the body. And Ayurveda is all about creating that balance or creating the conditions that will help the person to stay in the balance. And it can be um, lifestyle changes, like the way your routine is throughout the day is built. It can be food, it can be drinks, it can be relationships. So kind of everything is um, involved in your environment. and Everything will create either balance or disbalance in the body. Um, so the disease, disease is a sign of an imbalance. And Ayurveda helps you knowing your body type uh, you can predict that this imbalance is more likely. Oh, I so, for example, if you're a vata type and you know that you're moving to a desert-like climate that's very dry and you're eating crackers all the time or kale chips all the time, you dry by yourself and you are in a dry climate and you're eating okay. dry food. Dry As a result, yeah. you're creating more dryness, so you're going to be bloated, constipated, tired, and your skin is going to go dry. Right. Um, so knowing that, understanding that, you know, okay, I'm a vata type. When I move to Sahara uh, or in the desert, I need to bring in more oil into my body, on top of my body through like oil massage, and I need lots of hot, warm liquids and lots of soups. So I want to counterbalance what's outside in terms of dryness. I want to ba balance it out with oil and moisture, um, so I'm not disbalanced. Right, wonderful. So what I'm hearing is that it, it will be beneficial for all of us, not only to learn about what kind of doshas are we or what is our constitution, but also get someone like you or an Ayurvedic doctor or an Ayurvedic practitioner to, to tell us, okay, these are our types and this is what you need to do um, to, to prevent disease and to stay as balanced as you possibly can. How do you incorporate all of this into your health coaching practice with your clients? Well, I certainly think that it's not mandatory to get somebody. I definitely think that it speeds up the process. So as, as in any other field, um, you can start learning medicine all on your own. Right. Um, <laughs> nobody stops you from that. But it will be a long undertaking. So sometimes it just saves you a lot of time to go to somebody and say, okay, well, that's the problem I'm trying to solve. Give me the answer or help me to get to the answer. So it saves you a lot of time, uh, but it's definitely not mandatory. Um, the way I incorporate it in my work with mostly women is Ayurveda has a lot to say about digestion. In Ayurveda, the same as in Chinese medicine, um, digestion is a cornerstone of health, and that's where a lot of our disease and fatigue and skin disorders and bad hair and bad nails and hormones, that's where all of this starts. Absolutely. So um, I think the way I use Ayurveda is predominantly helping women to work through issues with their digestion, whether it's bloating or constipation or irregularity. Um, um, I just help them to recreate their diet and help them recreate their lifestyle and figure out what they were doing that actually created that imbalance in the first place. Um, and so far it's been working great. Cool. So if someone doesn't have the benefit of a fabulous health coach like yourself, how can someone start little by little incorporating some of these 
uh, things about Ayurveda into their practice? How can they learn a little bit more about it? Well, there are definitely lots of books. Um, if you go to Ayurveda.com, it's a website of Ayurvedic Institute, which is in New Mexico by Dr. Ladd. And he has lots of different books under his resources page. And he's probably my favorite teacher in the United States. <laughs> Uh, so I would definitely check out his website first. Uh, but also I would encourage people to start paying attention to what's happening in the body and then also outside. Because in Ayurveda there is this concept that um, we're a microcosm um, and everything is a around us influences what's inside of us. Wow. So when there's a one quality if you bring in more of that quality, it's going to increase. So, for example, like always increases like. Yeah. If it, it's cold outside and you eat ice cream, you're more likely to get a cold and have a runny nose. Yeah. Um, if it's super hot outside and you go run outside in that heat, you're going to be a lot more likely to have some sort of inflammation or skin irritation or just get angry. Um, <laughs> Because you have a lot more fire inside. Your own body, right? So, yeah, using that um, concept that like increases like, and to balance out one quality, you need the opposite quality, is very useful because when you wake up in the morning and it's, for example, gloomy and you feel a little bit sluggish, mm -hmm. um, kind of not inspired, you need to create opposite qualities to feel more inspired and light. So instead of having eggs with bacon for breakfast, you have a, like a stewed or steamed apple with some spices and uh, you go and jump or dance so you get a little bit of movement and that's the way you use that quality that one quality has to be balanced with the opposite Perfect. in your daily life. Wonderful. Um, tell me how long have you been practicing Ayurveda and how has it changed your life? Um, I think on the daily practice, I've been practicing it probably for four years, um, even though I was introduced to it much, much younger. Um, and I think one of the things that it gave me the most is that ability to check in with myself and see, okay, what is, what is that my body needs today? Yeah. Um, and another thing that was very, very important for me is to completely let go of that concept that there's a general answer for everything mm. and for everyone. Yeah. So if somebody tells that dairy is bad for everyone, avoid dairy. Uh, and then another person says, if you want calcium, you need dairy. dairy. So a lot of people feel, okay, there's, there's information and both of them are doctors. How come they're contradicting each other? And dairy is not the only thing. You can get the same thing about chocolate. You can get the same thing about coffee. So there's a lot of... Um, information that can make us feel very stressed out and overwhelmed to the point that I don't know what, who to listen or what to do, so I'll just do whatever I was doing the whole life. Um, so I it helps you understand, okay, whatever works for everyone doesn't mean it's going to work for me. If that doctor bases his advice on the way he feels, it doesn't mean that my body is the same. Right. And no doctor can get into my body and know what I need. So in the beginning, yes, it's good to have somebody's guidance. But at the end, what I really encourages is you become your own teacher. You learn how to listen to your body, and the clearer, cleaner your body is, the easier it is to listen and to trust it, yeah. because your intuition becomes a lot more realistic, and you're less likely to confuse what your mind says and what your body says. So when you when you want a cookie, that you know that it's probably your mind that wants a cookie, not your body. <laughs> um, but it gives you a lot more empowerment to make your own decisions without being worried or stressed out about what the whole community of holistic doctors or regular doctors right. is saying. You become kind of your own doctor. Right. Wonderful. That's, those are words of wisdom right there. <laughs> Um, I have run out of time, and but I uh, this is a great way to finish this, and I understand, and I agree with you when you say that it, it's all about like you know self understanding and 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 being curious and finding 
the solutions and the alternatives that actually work for you. And if you absolutely have to get additional tips because this is really uh, um, important nice. and at the beginning you may not know what to do, uh, you can certainly uh, go to Nadia's website, Spinach and Yoga, and sign up for her newsletter and get a lot of healthy tips and it's a great way to help you get started. Where can we find you? Where can we learn more about you, Nadia? Well, as you said, spinachandyoga.com is... Um probably the best way to find me and see what I'm up to. So if there are any classes or workshops yes. uh, that I'm doing online, um, they definitely will be posted there. Yes. And Facebook, where I post at least five times a day to share different tips and yes. um, bits of wisdom. Her Facebook page is amazing. You cannot miss it. It's facebook.com slash spinach and yoga. Yeah. And uh, like that page because it'll change your life and it'll be just a wealth of information, just like she is. And didn't I tell you that she had a beautiful, amazing spirit? Look at her. You already feel great. Like your belly feels nice and healthy already. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Martha. much for taking the time to be with us and impart some wisdom about the amazing practice that is Ayurveda. And you, if you have any questions whatsoever about Ayurveda, please leave a comment below. I'll make sure that I would ask Nadia first, and then I will go ahead and answer all your questions as soon as I get them. Share this video with all of your friends all over the internet. And for more great tips on how to live a healthy, happy, and beautiful life, sign up for my weekly newsletter at javancacrs.com. See you soon. Bye, Nadia. Bye.